whole event, the whole week. So it's the last slot, the last session of the day. So I will understand if you fall asleep. And I will don't take that personally. Uh, the colors of the slides uh, are uh, remembering the Ukrainian flag uh, because uh, the, the data community in Ukraine is very close to my heart. My first in-person conference was in Kiev a few years ago. So that's how I want to honor the, the colleagues, friends who are there in Ukraine fighting for their lives and freedom. Um, yeah. So a few words about me. I'm a father and a husband, so you can see my lovely family there. And you, someone, some of you may spot a little three-year-old blonde jumping everywhere. That's my son, that's my jeans. And you could see my wife as well a few days ago in the orange t-shirt uh, as she was helping. A uh, few days ago I started uh, working for Data Masterminds as Data Platform Architect. I'm also Microsoft MVP and uh, Microsoft Certified Trainer. Uh, the agenda for today is simple. It's what are the elastic jobs, why someone needs them or wants them, and how to configure them. So let's start with what. The, the Elastic Jobs uh, is a service uh, to schedule tasks and specifically scripts, T-SQL scripts, to run uh, against one or multiple targets. We will go to that, uh, how to configure them. Uh, and it's designed to run uh, against Azure SQL database. Uh, this is not something for on-premises, this, this is the cloud, and uh, there is no SQL agent uh, service for Azure SQL database. The service is still in preview. Um, last time I checked, I found a post on Stack Overflow from 2015. Someone mentioned the, the service, so it's a long, long preview. And if you are familiar with SQL Server on-premises and SQL Server agent, there's a feature called master and target servers, TSX and MSX. And Elastic Jobs have some of the features in them that allow to uh, spread the perfect jobs to uh, different targets from one source. And there are ma four main components. Um, the Elastic Job Agent, uh, which is like an agent on premises. Uh, the underlying job database that stores the procedures and uh, tables, similar to MSDB on SQL Server on premises. Uh, something which is different is the target groups, uh, where we can configure the, the databases, the, the whole instances. Uh, shards uh, or the, the pools and uh, yeah we can include them and we can also exclude some of the objects from the target groups and of course the, the job is the, the, the fourth component so you can imagine something like that where we have the job database uh, and we have jobs that's the where the agent is working and we have the target groups these are the different objects in the target groups, so three target groups. And when we push the jobs to different target groups, we can push them on a step level. So one job may have multiple steps, and each step might, might go to different target groups. So we have one, one job, three steps, three different target groups. So that's what is and what are the elastic jobs. And uh, you may may ask why someone wants to have them in their environment. So the first reason is there is no SQL agent uh, for the last uh, Azure SQL database. And you might want to do some data movement between uh, targets and the, 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 the source. So you can collect data, like for reporting purpose or for uh, performance monitoring. You have a central place uh, in one, in one database, and the job will get the, the data, the, just a the query, and push it back to the central database. Uh, you can also do like uh, 
schema refresh or any other tool, uh, any other task. I'm going to, to show you to how to create the, the tables in multiple databases just from this one job. Uh, yeah, so that's why you want to, you might want to have this. And uh, the target groups are really flexible. And uh, before we jump to the demo, uh, one important thing is that uh, it all requires also all sorts of kind of permissions. So the job database, the agent, requires to have DBSCOPE credentials. Uh, and there are two main different credentials, job execution and job refresh. And job refresh is responsible for refreshing the databases on the target. So if your target is the whole instance, uh, then the refresh credential can see all the databases. So if you remove the database or add new database, the agent will know about this. And the job execution credential is allowing the agent to execute the scripts against the databases. And if your target is just a single database, there is no job refresh credential because that's just this database. If you remove that, it's gone. So we have uh, this uh, DB scope credentials on the job database. And then we have, we have to create the log, like on the premises, the login in the master database. Uh, the user for the refresh will be in the master database as the, the one that's on top, that's always there. And the uh, uh, job execution user will be in every target database. And then we push the jobs and they can go through and do the damage. So I'm going to switch to Azure Portal just to show you how to create them in Portal, which not, it's not so straightforward. Well, it's easy, but you cannot finish the task in Portal. So first, where, where you can find them? I'm not sharing this. Why I'm not sharing this? Where is my? Um, one second. I need to duplicate. Keep changes. Can you see my? Yep, perfect. So the Elastic Jobs agents are, I have them in quick access. So this is the, uh, the, the icon, Elastic Job agents. And you can see I have multiple agents. When you go into one of the agents, you can see the history of the job execution. So one job failed, one job succeeded. Actually, the one that failed, it is just like one step that failed. Unfortunately, in the portal, we cannot double click or right click and see the details. There's no way to see what happened with the job. And same with the other objects on this on portal. Like I can see the list of jobs, like job, job collection. When what is the schedule? I cannot see the details in portal. Uh, I can also check the target groups. Brilliant. Three. Doesn't mean anything. It's just like I cannot go there. So with portal, it's very limited. So you have to use either T SQL to go to job database and read that from, from the tables, so from the system tables, or some PowerShell. And very similar to credentials. They are there, that's it. No, no other options, no, nothing to change, nothing to add. So yeah, that's not very, very useful. So how do you create them? Go back, come on, uh, and uh, oh. We can also search for Elastic Jobs. So when we create the Elastic Job agent, the form is really simple. It just requires a name. So uh, agent SQL bits, something like that. And you have to select the underlying database for the, for the job. And the requirement is the S0 service. Uh, it cannot be basic. It has to be at least S0. So I have few servers, like for this example, the, 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 um, the one that exists already. Uh, here. 
So that's my job server. I have a database dedicated for that job. It says S0. But if I select the tar one of the targets, uh, which is here, it has some databases, but they are basic, so one level below, and I cannot pick them up. They are not listed. So I have to go here, select the database, click OK, and that's it. Review, create. The service is free. You have to pay for the database, for the underlying database. Uh, the S0, the, the, the lowest, I think it was 14 euro per month, something like that. Um, Microsoft uh, suggests to use the brand new empty database to create that. And if you try to delete the database that is linked to the agent, you won't be able to do that. You will get an error like the agent is using that. But if you want to drop the instance, the uh, Azure SQL the instance, Azure SQL Server, it will allow you to drop everything. So, yeah. And that's how you create the agent. Fun. And that's all in Portal. You cannot do anything else. You cannot do any um, credentials here. You have to switch to something, something different. So I have Management Studio. And we have a set of T-SQL commands where we can um, come on, where are you? Recent. Um, here. So as I mentioned before, we have to create the uh, database scoped credentials. And I will open two windows. It's the same script, but I'm going to connect in one script to the source to the job server, uh, which is here. And the other one will be on the target, one of the targets I have. And it's here. So the, uh, the way the script is created, I, I have the comments where I should run the, the command. So I'm going to create the master key and the database scope credentials in the job database, which is like that. So I have to switch the context to the job database. Um, did I create the agent? Is it done now? Yeah. Excellent. So I can create the credentials. Now I'm going to switch to the targets. So in my case, it's just one target. Well, the one target server, but multiple databases. And here. So I need to create the logins for the refresh and the, uh, the user for the refresh and the login for the job credential. And now I need to switch to target databases like that. I'm going to pick one of them, create the user to, to, to the, so the job can execute uh, the script, and some extra permission to do something. So in my case, it's creating the table. So I'm going to create the table. And uh, Management Studio does not like me today, so I have to type manually, even though the list of the databases was there before. So it's, uh, yeah, maybe I need to upgrade to the latest version. And now we are going back to the job server to create the target groups. So there's a, com the, there's a start procedure to create the target group, uh, add members, uh, and there are two types, include and exclude. So I'm going to include the whole server and then exclude one of the databases like that so you can see here's the difference and for the adding the the target as uh, i'm adding this the whole instance i need the refresh credential because that allows me to uh, the, the agent can see the databases the, the changes in the databases uh, so we can confirm how the target looks like um, 
where in Portal we cannot see that, so that's one, one of the ways to see that. Uh, now I'm going to create a job, which is very similar uh, to on-premises. Add some steps. So in my case, I'm going to create the table and run it against the target group here. Perfect. I can confirm how my job and steps look like. It's a very simple one, but so I have just one step. But you can see all the details. Again, uh, not available in portal. And also, you cannot execute the jobs from portal. Uh, you have to start them here. So I have the command here. And what's kind of annoying, it's not, there is no, like when you have agent on premises, there is an icon you can right click, like see the properties, jobs. There is nothing for this in Management Studio. But I like scripting, I like coding, so I it's not a problem for me. Uh, so I executed the job. Now I can see the history of the executions. And I can see different information. So it gives me details about, it's just one step, so I have details about the whole job, uh, the whole step, and every target it hit. So uh, it's very deta detailed. And then if I go to one of the, the target servers, to the databases, I can see the new table is here. And it was sent from the job server to every, every target. Since it's a very short session, I'm not going to uh, show you every server, but I will show you the collection one, uh, just the result, because we don't have too much time for that. So I had prepared that before, and this is my job database. I'm using this as an output central place. Uh, and here's my central collection table. And it requires this extra column, internal execution ID, that's unique. And uh, it gets the details of all the servers. So my query was select server name, database name, and get date time. And I sent that to every target I had. So you can see that it's collecting the details about server database and when it was run. And it when you can see when exactly I was testing that. So that is one way to collect the data as well. It doesn't have to be the job uh, database. It can be any other database. But it was easier for me to, to do this this way. And uh, just quickly, if you want to do this fully scripted in one go, um, there is a way to do this in PowerShell. I have a script when if I run this and I leave you for 10 minutes, I, I come back and it's all gone. It's all ready, all tested. So you can see the results, the demo. I can just sit there. So that concludes the demo. And I'm going to switch to the summary. So Elastic Jobs are a fancy SQL agent jobs uh, with some extra features. Uh, you can create them in Azure portal, but you need some extra tool as well, like T-SQL, Management Studio to run T-SQL, or PowerShell. Uh, in my case, I'm, I'm using the az.sql module, uh, the Microsoft module for managing uh, Azure SQL components, and DB tools, the open source module. Uh, thank you very much for staying here for the last session of the day. Uh, this is my feedback QR code. And if you have any questions after that, my handle on LinkedIn, on Twitter is Mikey Bronowski, no space, and also at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, uh, please send me an email or send me a message. Thank you very much.